Three dozen bucks. This is the fandom share that appeared in the tower. Uh, they're becoming better in the lore, not so much in the gameplay, but no. Yeah. Yeah, but like just, just visually, they don't fit. But yeah, this oh, is episode fifteen. Oh, they finally 15. changed the town's rules about retreating and shooting in the same turn because I was tired of that shit. For those that don't know, these two have actually played the war game. I have not because I'd never had the money. I just used tabletop simulator. I can't oh. afford it. I lost two thousand dollars in one year. Plenty. <laughs> what? Why did you do that to yourself for war? Like, for Transformers, I can understand that, but what? <laughs> I went mad with power. Yourself. Because Platy is a drunk platypus. Bart. He's one of the three platypus VTubers that exist. <laughs> yeah. Well then. Our, our numbers grow every day. Soon I won't be endangered. I also, he also lives in a dumpster. Don't we all? Yes, but he has a specially, a specially smelly dumpster and he drinks the dumpster juice. Okay, but sing after me. Who lives in a trash fire under the sea? Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, this is the Mechanica showing up on a planet, doing their thing. Also, I my... hate them. I hate their angular ass designs in the gothic world. I... <laughs> I like the Mechanicus to an extent because of their whole religious aspect, but I'd never go full Mechanicus, you know, replacing everything. But yeah. Something, something, um, Ship of Theseus. I mean, they're always looking for ancient tech. All I'm saying is the Ship of Theseus probably didn't have boobs afterwards. Remember what happened the last time we tried finding it on a people uh. world? Oh yes, <laughs> I remember. They're always they looking for ancient tech, no matter what. I do like his robotic arm right there that has the snipper. The heavens. I am not sure who the hell you think I am. Who the hell I think? God damn it. Stupid jokes. What? Oh, that's the Garen Logon joke. <laughs> like, I, 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 I love and hate it if they just keep fucking quoting mech at each other and that's just part of their culture. I wouldn't be surprised if it was, honestly. They literally praised the machine spirits within giant titans, which were basically just giant mecha. Hmm? hmm? What, Fable? Oh, I just... I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. Besides, you have to find this STC. I don't remember where an STC is. The Omni Seeker Pylon. Well, actually, or an Omni Seeker Pylon. I don't see any STC around here, but that giant... Pillar certainly looks peculiar. My dog just came in and left. She just left the door open. I need to teach the dog how to close the door. This, this is ancient technology. Look, there are more of them over there. Yeah, just giant stereos. Oh yeah, and there's Cypher. Don't ask me what it, why he's here, I don't know. He's just vibing and I hate it. Look at him. <laughs> Um, Cypher is one of those characters in 40k that fights on both sides and we don't know what his actual plan is. All we know is that his name is actually just a title. I am part of season legends. Upon the days of great celebration, mankind put twice these planets, jumping around like idiots as the repeated patterns of sound. Out of these I mean, they also injected yeah, of Sounds pretty much like what the fabricator general does all the time. We must yeah, send for more depths. We have a lot of yeah they progress. literally will take apart that stuff just a little more. I do like the intro though. Or are the soldiers the legions of light? We are the sector, the death of the sun. Also, for those that want to know, my favorite Primarch is Sanguinius, because I love what a lot of the Blood Angel successors have in their Catholic iconography and aesthetic. And yes, the Blood, the Blood Angels are the Legion of the Sanguinius, who's their Primarch. Basically, he's their dad, kind of. 
dead. He's also technically a vampire. Gasp. He drinks blood and he's also an angel. Blood angels, you get it. So that's what that's about. Yeah. I never knew. Wait, really? I just knew that there was a group called the Blood Angels and they ran around and seemed slightly different than than Space Marines. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, the second mission for the Ultramarines, since you guys didn't hear it or weren't here for it, he, the Emperor has told them to go into the webway and outdance the best Harlequins of the of the Eldar, which are basically space elves. Oh, they'll never win. They're, they're as good as dead. What? Tell them Salem. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, Hopefully you'll be with us in this year. I'd rather not. Oh. Their obnoxious chatting just worsens my eternal headache. Well, Ray. maybe no discussion about something will each just of mind, my lord. I'm open to talk about anything. I would be too, but let's not forget what happened last time you said that. Try and keep to subjects that won't make me want to destroy the entire galaxy with my transcendent bowel movements. The last time he brought up a subject, it was his traitor sons. The traitor oh, legions. No. Which, of course... Uh. Yeah. Which made things start to explode. Also, at some point, this reminds oh, me... Oh, no. At some point, I want to get, if I ever can, just get art of me, like, shooting a ray and turning everyone into Digimon. Anyway. Sure. So, any ideas? How about you tell me about those Xeno creatures that you mentioned back when we read those revolting questions? Toa, or whatever their name was. Here it comes. Uh, can I not say that I did? Are you no, not me? the Bioticals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bioticals. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Toa. Mm -hmm. Oh. Maybe. Oh. Yeah. It's just, you said not to talk about things that would cause explosive warp farts and... I would like to remind you, young man, that I'm the motherfucking Emperor, and that to find my subject matter of young the day will have you be selected as the target for the- are you accessing me, I said, young man. Pretty much. Compared to everyone- Compared to the Emperor, everyone's a Did young man. Destroy mission during the next blood games. I want to see this guy mode. seeing YMCA. It's possible. As we'll have a pleasing high time chasing you around. Oh, oh no. <laughs> And I'm going to presume destroy part of something they particularly enjoy. <laughs> oh my god. There's something they will be destroying with those throbbing guardian spears. Am I right? <laughs> you were supposed to be charismatic while persuading people to obey you. Yeah, that's the blood He's game. The Emperor, he doesn't need to be fucking charismatic. He says that you do it or you have all of mankind beating your ass with nerf bats. Basically, a but slow and painful way to die. He, uh, basically, the blood games are when they release someone or have a custodian basically try and seek in to try and attack the Emperor. And that's why it's nerf or nothing. That's why they have a blood game, but you you saw the stripper stodies. You see how his other brothers are like. <laughs> yes, they're you. Yes, they are always getting called the uh, the stripper stodies. Well, stop whining and tell me about these Tarzinos then. Tar. Uh, fair enough, my lord. The Tau are a race of naive, blue gray fish like people with a vagina on their forehead and just a stupid toy looking war gear with no skull ornaments on at all and went really makes pathetic pew pew sounds when fired. Right. <laughs> Believe it or not, that is how <laughs> the actual voice actor for that character views them. He hates the Tau. He I believe really it. does. He really, really does. <laughs> it's great, Care honestly. To elaborate? Must I? Well, during the 35th millennium... He'll actually explain the actual lore of the Tau a bit. The mechanics were flying around the empty void of the eastern fringes of the galaxy for no reason. Then they found some world filled with primitive fucking 
in Xenos that only use rocks as weapons, which, for the record, is still a lot more aesthetically pleasing than what they've got going on today. They are probably the newest race in all of 40k. No, wait, that's the Leagues of Otan now. Well, technically, the Leagues of Otan are new. They're based off of the Space Dwarfs from before, but... These no-nose fish flappers split themselves into four different factions or whatever that represented the only resources they had in the little rock of theirs, which were water, earth, fire, and air. These yeah. factions constantly fought like skinny, miscolored walks with mental issues for no reason. Then at some point, another faction came along out of nowhere, which called themselves the Ethereals. They said to the Tau, Hey, you should stop throwing rocks at each other, you fucking idiots. And the other Tau said, Oh yeah, I didn't really think of that. So then they became the Ethereal Slaves for no reason, started to build all kinds That's of stupid good. shit, and then decided to go and try some space conquering, which they've barely done any of, since they're still sitting way up east rolling their fucking thumbs. No, wait, no, they don't even have thumbs. For those who don't know, Tau are actually smaller than the average human. And weaker physically. Yeah, that's why they have guns and guns and guns and mechs. Pretty much. They they are laughable in melee. So, sum it all up. They're a small Xenos race with scary toy guns that kidnap God or God and cut their balls off for no reason. They are completely redundant in any threat record and I'm oh, sick threat. to death of them being brought up all the time because there's never any fucking reason to. Damn, calm down, son. I was only asking. Shit, <laughs> you are starting to sound like your father. I'm sorry, my lord. So. But yeah, the uh, the Tau do integrate anyone into their empire, but for humans they do. Uh, I think sterilize them because humans breed a lot faster than they could ever expect to deal with. Yeah, but we also die a lot quicker. I mean, and compared to the Tau, uh, a human guardsman would has, I believe, a higher chance of surviving, especially in melee combat. No, I meant old age shit. Oh. I'm not sure how long a Tau lifespan is. Uh, yeah, I don't think anyone dies of old age anymore. Uh, a Tau's average lifespan is about 60 to 50 years. They oh. actually die relatively fast. Oh, what? wow. They have a short lifespan compared to humans. Well, they have they a short lifespan, them. but they also breed so much slower that a human's breeding rate, yeah. a species it, it, that nominally only has one or two kids, I mean, is considered fast for them. Well, in the Imperium, people usually have more kids than that nowadays. It's like in ye old times. That's but... fucking stupid! <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. It's completely fine. Just like a gang creating the old hobos in a high school, they're in others with promises of deeds performed for the yep, greater I, good. Uh, Mech, I looked it up. It's literally around 50 years. Oh, okay. Tau but yeah, the Tau have this whole thing where they believe in the greater good, which is usually just what the Ethereals want. Testifying what the greater good is, nor why they keep moaning about it as they force you to go deep inside their own puppy domain where you can never hope to escape once inside. I am genuinely sickened when you put it into these contexts. Yeah. I hope all this repressed anger isn't from some pseudo weird first hand experience. I'd rather not say. No. I'm not sure if I should show that video to them. <laughs> you should. <laughs> but yeah, the main reason the tower's still alive and the Imperium hasn't just knocked them out is because it would require too much resource dedication and since they aren't that big of a threat, they just kind of leave them there. Because that would force the Imperium to have to f take away resources from other places that need it, like it. Like when the orcs attack, or when the Tyranids attack. When they're always doing that. <laughs> Look, when in Warhammer is someone not attacking at least one other thing? Yeah. I mean, it is a war game, but yeah. Cringeworthy ways. Oh, well, if you put it like that. It's right there, father. Do not let him brainwash you so easily. Or, uh, um... Do you still have a brain, actually? Why are you red? That's Magnus the Red. I thought it was Radon. Oh my god. <laughs> Magnus the Red is one of the Primarchs. He, uh, he ended up on a sorcerer planet. I don't know why he's red, but a bunch of the Emperor's children are kind of weird like that. Some of them look like perfectly normal humans, except for being freakishly large. Others have the skin color of coal, 
flaming red eyes and well we're not going to talk about what conrad cursed is i'll have to ask someone to check later and see if it's still in there magnus also I only has one eye am i going to store all my glorious fourth wall breaking puns brainwashing really you're complaining about brainwashing <laughs> for looking like a yellow submarine there seems to be a distinct lack of intelligent life living inside your head that's fucking hilarious <laughs> well, yeah, like the oh, the chaos worshippers yeah. are the for the fucking Xenos. I'm taking the side of reason in this debate, and my reason is telling me that you are very biased in this discussion. No, I'm not. I'm just telling the truth. The truth about how the tower a race of creepy old vagina-faced homos <laughs> exist for no reason? Exactly! <laughs> Father, do not listen to him. While I do not appreciate so much the hate towards these them. Xenos myself, but with their mm. distinctive disconnect. What? What? Uh, I heard Platys make a sound. The disrespect they have for arcane Point knowledge. Comes I can tell you that these creatures could do hey. more good for you than bad, if handled correctly. Is that so? Then tell me, how would they benefit my goals? Maybe we can get the mechanicus to turn into servitors and then have them develop this right technology on their foreheads <laughs> that way. Your God. Use the galaxy. The town so, has he hates them so much. State, and many technological fields in but the span of 6,000 years. They are an open-minded and fairly naive race, always open to the suggestion of more allies joining their empire. While their leaders are oppressive and tyrannical, they are but small, cuddly teddy bears in comparison to the bureaucratic puppeteers of the Imperium or the iron-handed maniacs of chaos. True. You must be as naive as the tower if you don't believe that Listen, mankind is just as capable we don't of care. such atrocities. It, it is something that the Inquisition does Imperium sometimes. Is gilding onto more than a few innocent people, I bet, what with all those inquisitorial sterilization camps. As for chaos, well, Slanesh Chaos is just... Humor. No, right. I hate Slanesh. Uh, th 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 Fine, you got me on that one. I think that with the use of your powerful charisma, you could manipulate these Slanesh into working for you. Which would more than likely aid in the recovery, or at the very least, further the lifespan of this rotting Imperium of yours. Didn't you mention that they had no presence in the warp? How am I supposed to use my charisma when I can bolster it with my psychic strength? No, they do have a presence. It's very weird. Their souls are very weak, so they don't have any psychers, which are basically space wizards. So they can't really, uh, you know, use any magic. I don't think they've ever battled chaos, but mm. they have oh, actually well, fought demons before. Oh yeah, the funny time is when they thought the Necrons were their allies. <laughs> hmm. Uh, basically, they were battling a small scout squadron of uh, Tyranids, and then the Necrons came in and killed the Tyranids, and they were like welcoming the. Ne For those that don't know, Necrons are basically Terminators with an Egyptian aesthetic. Is the best way I can describe them, and they hate organics. It's just hmm. dead hating the living. Let's go. Pretty much. I think an overwhelming presence Mac, is just uh, mine or yours. Skeletons, Mac, uh, skeletons. Pretty much. Don't be able to affect what? them. Lord, what? I beg of you, do not listen to this possessed traitor. Honestly, I should show you some of the designs of the Necrons. That is something that they do. The Ethereals use used pheromones to control the other casts of Tau. They only fight for their greater good. Well, what if I use my powers to become their greater good? But, but my lord. No, but. I'd prefer at least one of you custodians to keep your armor on. <laughs> what? Never mind, just shut up and do what I say. Excuse uh. my lord, As long as they are under regulation and they do not interfere with mankind, it is all right. They have whips worthy memory with no skulls or holy symbols on them. As long as they serve the Imperium and only fire upon those who wish to destroy them. Honestly, it's not a bad right. plan to but unite them. But the economic philosophy that promotes a completely classless living where every individual works for the betterment of it all, but in actuality, it's the present dictation based around the ethereal well-being. As long as everyone is treated well and fairly in the conjoined Imperium, where yeah. there will be no need for retarded and corrupt political systems. And I mean, he's not wrong with that. My direct control. It's all right. But they have turned the whole lot of loyal guardsmen into sterile based running towers that only ever draw nude pictures that they use as tower propaganda. That's the fandom. 
I don't know why they draw tails lewdly, but they do. God damn it. I know why, but I can't say it. I don't want to know why. As long as I'm not shown any of that, I want to send a lobby if you tan Harry Slan if you're more garbage. It's all right. You, you got that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but what did you just say? The Tau are a cowardly race. Medica and I think Platy understand that bit. They don't fight me. Cowards! <laughs> we fire upon their enemy so far, <laughs> never engaging in any form of melee combat. Is this true, Magnus? Well, yes. That is absolutely disgraceful. Oh boy. How can you not fight in glorious melee combat with weapons? Champions of the battlefield. Yeah, how dare they not engage in lip to lip combat? Wait, what? They're also what? physically weak and pathetic. They seriously make drones all the warriors tasks of them have a technology to make giant robot suits, but they only ever use those suits to carry bigger guns and not to fight in close quarters. Seriously, what is the fucking point in making a giant robot control? It's called a Gundam, it's not called a fistum. <laughs> I mean, but the Gundam still punches thing. things. I mean, mostly a swords thing, but that's not the point. And some of those swords are well, are on the level where they might as well be ranged weapons. As he says, if you're gonna make a general, if you're not gonna use it to punch the shit out of things. They actually do do that. Oh, oh yeah. Does anyone remember the catacans? Wait, wait, wait. So, so I'm assuming that most of this is just rules to use other races with a Tau army. Yeah, you can. There's a, another group called the Kroot, and I can't remember the other kind of bug people that kind of look like Geonosians that they have. So what you're saying is that you can run an army that will pretty much... You can run Tau fucking fire support with pretty much any other army. Kinda. Mm -hmm. Yes, however, the thing is, GW has yet to release any other models for such armies. If you want to look up, you can see some crew models, but they're actually not the best looking, as all GW models are. But yeah, there I see the fandom. If you hate me, you just hate me because I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Get out of here. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, do anyone remember when I told you about the catacans? How they're. I um, they're so funny. The Catacans are basically a guardsman regiment from a jungle world where they're... It's basically a giant death world where everything in the jungle tries to kill you. And, uh... Basically, they've all become 80s action heroes thanks to that. They're all Rambos and Commandos and Ellen Ripley's. All of it. So, uh... Yeah. Crude have this thing of their literally ability is you are what you eat, so they gain abilities from things they eat. When a crude ate a catacan, they started wearing red and disobeying orders. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. They grabbed a red bandana and just started disobeying orders. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> the thing is, though, uh, the crude are actually banned from eating. Well. They're forbidden from eating Tau because the Tau told them to, and they th because they see them as their saviors, they're like, that's fair. We won't do that then. Uh, also, they have a basically a nutrition leader who tells them what to eat, because if they eat too much of one thing, they'll basically become mindless monsters. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot willingly associate 
associate myself with such dishonorable creatures, and they want to join the Imperium of Man, they better bring some fucking chain katanas or something. Honestly, that does sound cool. A chain katana sounds cool to me. Lord, I will personally take my helmet and go to the crusade to the Tywills myself, and I will shut it down the throats of every single one of their pathetic fucking hides, drowning them in their own blood for your glory, my lord! Father, are you really <laughs> sure this reasoning is, um... Sound. Shut the fucking up, you top of this outfit, Petra. That's one to one so far. Keep it up. Okay. Oh <laughs> Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I just gonna... love the insult, you tub of discarded ketchup. I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to get bored of the rant. We have I been know. doing this for 13 minutes. I know. Curve. I know, he's gonna stop ranting about the towel. But he is going to tell you stuff oh, about the towel, I though. Don't love me some good also, one time. thing you need to know, Me Medica, this is very important. If you see the Dark Eldar, do not trust them whatsoever and run immediately the other way or kill them. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'm well aware of that. Yeah. I don't want to be a bench. But then they were contacted by the Dark Eldar and offered them help. Since the tower so desperate, they accepted the alliance and both factions fought together side by side against the Yeah, troops. they for some reason After decided that the Dark that Eldar, Eldar, Eldar were, were worth talking to. They wanted a prize for his help, which was 77 tower from each house, including seven ethereals, as a cultural exchange, as they called it. The tower and all their and now they're benches. agreed to send a tower. Oh no, there's something their else. Later they fought against the second wave of Tyrannus, but this time the Dark Eldar had some special forces with them that they called grotesques. Which were big hopping beasts that moaned in suffering as they fought. Later, when the battle was over, the town managed to find out that these grotesques apparently won the tower ambassadors from the cultural exchange. The town were kind of upset by this, even if they were the ones who wouldn't be sent their brethren along with the spiky, stupid, sadistic looking drug dealers. I mean, they, the that is what they look like. The dark elder ships, but as they fired upon them, they realized that the ships weren't actually there anymore. Later, when the Tower forces went back to the planet they were defending in the first place, they discovered that the Tower Elder had super pillaged the entire planet and left it completely barren. All Tower civilians, buildings, and presumably plants taken to the Dark Elder realm of Carveron to become subject to incredibly kinky shit, possibly involving precision knives, drugs, and nail clippers. You would think that anyone would assume that a cultural exchange with a species that looked like completely cracked up EDSM enthusiasts would be a bad idea. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if they would have had some damn melee weapon. With them. <laughs> that wouldn't have been a fucking problem. Always fix for an entertaining story. I just remembered something. There is Where one really cool. Uh, uh, even better, there is one. Tower yeah, he's gonna talk about him. The oppressive rule of the Ethereals and actually uses his giant robot armor to wield the devastating warp-powered sword. Yeah, Captain Farsight is actually pretty cool. Everything you just said sounded pretty damn worthy yeah. of my attention. Basically, it's, the reason he's lived so long is because that giant warp-powered sword, basically anything he kills with it, it gives their years of life to him. Uh, Commander Carfreight, or whatever his Very name cool. is. Commander Farsight, yes! Not only is he known for wrecking a large number of orcs in close combat, but he formed a breakaway colony from the main town region known as the Farsight Enclave. Apparently, he didn't appreciate having his troops lobotomized by the Ethereals, so presumably he decided to go and do his own thing. Interesting. Tell me more about this Carfrey character. He sounds fun. Perhaps yeah. we can make a cheesy animated hollow vid series about him and his adventures and fill it to the brim with my kind of Imperial propaganda. Yes. The Beyond of a New Allegiance plan has only just begun. <sighs> I was hoping to change subject matter to something that lessens my own sort of internal headache. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. The Inquisition are still here. That something so vile and abominable could happen to us, second of the world. Of this the is the leader of the Inquisition, Yodor Karamazov. He is a gigantic the asshole. Not done their job very well. Mm, what were you gonna say? I just said he's a giant dude. I mean, you're I not. I don't think there's anyone that really likes the Inquisition. Except the Inquisition. Hey, don't worry, Fyodor. At least we still have each other. And not only that, but a shitload of Inquisitors from across the galaxy as well. But even now, I still don't have those damn sad paper cigarettes. Seriously, what the f- We are going to have to do 
Yeah, he wants sandpaper cigarettes. Yeah, Blanny, how else do you think he sounds so sexy? You know what, that explains so much. However, with the god Andra as my witness, it be the most pure and noble thing anyone has ever done for the Imperium. Now that's the spirit of Fyodor. I mean, look at all the Ordos here. We got Quintiers of the Order of Malayas. The Ordo of Malayas is for fighting against, uh, goddamn. Oh wait, he's and just gonna go through them. And their chamber militia, of course. And then we got the Ordo of Aegis, the Ordo of Averis, the Ordo of Custodum, as you mentioned, the Ordo of Sardis, the Ordo of Sanctorum, the Ordo of Redactus, the Ordo of Necklace, the Ordo of Scriptorium. The Ordo of Scriptorium and the Ordo of Redactus are always fighting because one records history and one censors it. The Order of Volterium, the Order of Sicarius, the Order of Vigilus, the Order of Regimentus, the Order of... They're literally Ordos, just to keep an eye on other Ordos. Who watches the Watchmen? Uh, that guy over there. Pretty much. There's one Ordo that we don't know if it actually even exists, because there's only one guy who's a part of it, and we don't know what he does. Arduous, the Ordo Otis, the Ordo Alphys, the Ordo of Characters, and the Ordo of Kronos. Why the hell is there an Ordo Sandpaper Cigarette? Why? I really need a Sandpaper Cigarette. I need a... Horlocks, men and women of the Emperor's eternal glory, will charge Eternity Gate and the Imperial Palace to find whoever sent this message. We will save the Imperium from the violent yeah. corrupted who have deeply entrenched themselves in the past most holy spaces. Guilt creeps as most unexpected, which just further shows that there's no yeah. such thing as innocence. Oh yeah, he actually does believe that there is no such thing as innocence. I forgot that's a thing for Fyodor here. He will literally kill you if you waste his time, because then you aren't innocent to him at all. Because you're wasting an Inquisitor's time. <sighs> I don't know why. Platy, you're what, wasting what? my. Platy, you're wasting my time. Thanks. I'm gonna do it again. Hey, Silver, you should just preach them to death. <laughs> I do love that line. <laughs> Maybe you should just preach him to death. Be quiet, Dominique. <laughs> but yes, we have been going through this series for a while. We're eventually gonna have to keep going through it. Unfortunately, due to loss. Do you? Yes. But I can take a detour for a little bit. Considering yes. we have a we have a bunch of uh no, wait, I already showed Medica this video. I have to show Carson others than what. It's the one talking about the World of Darkness. Which the, one? The one talking about World of Darkness. You show me parts of it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, we'll see you all in the next video, and we might watch that. Who knows? We're probably going to watch it. So, once again, if you like what we're doing here, consider subscribing, and yeah. Or I'll toss this platypus at you. He's very stinky. Send help. Like nibble on your toe. <laughs> uh, also, if for any reason you like the Dark Eldar, please rethink your life choices and you need Jesus in your life. But Dami Mommy surprise with extra... What? <laughs> All right, Since Gladys, when? <laughs> Gladys, I'm here thing. against my will. Gladys, you're gonna get these hands. <laughs> five five seconds, seconds for everyone. <laughs> so, so yeah, we're either gonna do this or these people are actually going to learn 40k lore, but we'll see what happens. Next... Didn't I sit down and listen to your lecture once? Maybe, once. but... <laughs> once is the main point. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh... over on my YouTube channel, for those that don't know, if you go scroll quite a bit down, I did a... It took me a month to make, and it took a lot of long nights when I work nights during that time to make that. So if you guys want to see me try to explain... 40k lore to three people that I forced against their will. Yeah, you can go watch that too. That sound is my mood. <laughs> well then. My 